pyramid the pyramid amid peers to appear amid a peer amid the stars ape here amid ids a peer amid stairs hoping to pyramid the stars and avoid the dimarepa when he calls can you see pi here amid masonic stones a b c do re mi and dna the eternal pyre amid the stars that changed the first pair of amids into protean proportions enlightened per am i'd awaken each aeon awake 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 13 plays on the word pyramid orchestrated in a psychedelic vision into a cosmic poem that seems to delineate some general principles about the universe so if you look within the pyramid amid people of like mind your peers you can teleport and appear or transform another location another cosmic peer a dock and you can say we doctor we got our ship to the next port a portal I pour it all out to you ape here amid ids the primal nature of us our natural selves locked into an ego an ego that's embarrassed by its bodily functions and being stared at and pyramid is a verb to realize that we all are stars and we all can take a proper wonderful place in the universe and express our individuality and also be part of a larger group and then we can avoid a pyramid spelled backwards sounds like grim reaper the dimmer reaper and that's what's our crowding and misunderstanding and mistrusting each other is causing to happen and can you see pi the magic number that's all tuned into our language ma's sonic secrets on the tones and the stones and the vibrations that move the sand into the Sanskrit Sanskrit that raised the buildings with vibrations the eternal pyre amid the stars the consciousness of life itself God gee odd gee it's odd that anything exists isn't it how do we explain it takes two people to make a person how did the first two people come into being are all the myths a mystery a missed story is there more to it and the science the first pair of amids amids are the building blocks of protein and the protein takes on a protean or a super animal nature being able to enlighten and be enlightened and move matter one way or the other enlightened per am I'd awaken each aeon as each person says I am I am then the great I awakens and we all become the one great being all part of the diamond I we no longer have to die to see Christ's cry cries to all crystallize cries to all eyes gee he is us gee he's us 
Gee, he is us. And what he could do, we can do and more. See others as self. Each self is a cell in the body of God. Earth brain awakens. Isn't it amazing there's a universal pattern that the whole planet is like a giant brain? The east and the west, the left and the right, the logic and the intuition. Everything is energy taking shape in variations on a universal theme. We are the flesh of the earth. Each one of us is a conglomeration of billions of cells that all make up one consciousness. And that consciousness isn't in any one. The cells are all replaced. But it goes on from life to life. And so the universe, the earth, has a consciousness too of all of the cells joining together in a way that we don't necessarily understand. But there is a universal consciousness just as we are a consciousness. And that consciousness follows a universal pattern. We can see it in the language, we can see it in the trees, we can see it in the way the bronchi of the lungs branch, we can see it in the shapes that the mouth makes when it makes the letters. Other coincidences, notice the shape of the A is a lot like a four, and the color of the sky is blue, and blue is 4,000 angstroms in the A for the angstroms, and the note A is 440, again the A shape, and the arch of the lips, and the crossbar of the teeth and the way the trees branch and the oxygen process and the ah, everything interconnects in an uncanny way, showing that there is a conscious plan and pattern to everything that's been called the Kabbalah, ka ba -la, the mind, the body, and the spirit. Ka is karma and memory, ba is body, and la is creativity, imagination. So here's a little addition to the mouthabet idea that the shape of the mouth corresponds to the letters in some way. Mm, you see the natural M shape of the mouth? Mm, it's the letter M and then O. O, you see the circle for O. And then letter B. B, B. See the lips bulging for the B. And see the letter F. See the fangs of the F. F and L. See the L wiggling and um, you can see other shapes too like uh, the ah the arch and the crossbar and um, D D can't see it but you try it you can feel your tongue curving against the roof of your mouth and N shape that's even the shape of the nose is like the N letter and the making of the letter N is a um, closing off the nasal cavity, the nose nose, and uh, T, 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 you have to put your tongue to your teeth t, to get that burst of sound, and if you try uh, a lot of the other letters, you can find ways that they fit, J, J, see how the jaw juts, J, J, and G, the little thing that hangs below on that letter, everything appears to be interconnected. Some of them are not as obvious as others, but the W and U, you can even see a U shape in the mouth there. E, you can kind of see the letter E, lowercase e. Um, H, <laughs> see the line and the, the verticals. It takes a little imagination, but some of them are just jump out at you. So what good is knowing this? Does it make sense to understand that a glass can be shattered by sound waves? That we have to know just what frequency to make the sound and the glass will shatter? And that if we put sand on a drum and vibrate it we get different shapes related to the sounds? Just so if we see how music and words and sounds affect the brain. And look at these brain scans of people before and after making certain sounds that heal the brain and generate a new form. These brain scans of the brain before and after saying sa ta na ma. Notice the sphere floating. That is the global consciousness activating. 
That's your psychic connection to the universal mind, and saying Satanama activates that. So the ancients knew it was worth taking a chance on saying chance, that it changes and challenges the present paradigm, what we're thinking is not fixed, and chanting and opening the mind to new ideas and clearing the mind with certain sounds restores the brain to its natural state and gives us the power to create. It's a brilliant meditation invented thousands of years ago. It utilizes the chi power of touching the fingers, the electrical energy that circles around through our body, and it incorporates the meaning of the time-space continuum and the vortex where everything starts as the all. Sa is all, ta is the one, the individual, na is none, like death, and ma is more, the summation. It also incorporates decreasing volume. Each volume is for a different energy circuit. You say it out loud for the physical body, then you say it softer towards the emotions, then you whisper it for the heart. Then you lip sync for the mind. Then you think it and remember for the spirit. And it gradually winds you down into a deep meditation. So one of my goals with this presentation is to inspire people to do meditation. It's been proven to help the brain and if more people did it, the world would be a better place. That sometimes thinking we need big solutions may be misleading us from the simple solutions of just fixing our brains and fixing our personalities. So now I'm going to demonstrate the Satanama. Start with these fingers and each one corresponds to a sound. Sa almost looks like an S and an A and Ta you can kind of see a T and Na kind of see the N and Ma there's the M of the Ma. So it resonates on many many levels and you start out out loud for the physical Sa Satanama, and you should close your eyes. Satanama, and you get softer, and it gets a momentum going into the silence. And the most important thing is to remember to be silent after you're done for five to ten seconds at least to get the full effect. And there's a t there's a pitch to it too, a, a, a melody. Satanama goes up at the end. Satanama, 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 Satanama. Notice my breathing increased, and if you practice it with people, you'll see they take a deep breath after they do it. And I've had people thank me years later saying, oh, that saved me. I, my car was towed or my boyfriend left and I did Satanama and I felt so much better. And it's helped me walking long distances, being out in the cold, being out in the heat. When you stop your mind from going, oh, oh, I'm suffering, I'm suffering. Oh, and you keep thinking the same thing. Satanama, say it again, no more. That's what Satan is in a way, is saying it again and again. And Satanama ends that and lets you release yourself from your guilt and your mind. Your mind can be your worst enemy when it just gets into repetitive uh, chatter. Let's return to the Great Pyramid now. I think of the Great Pyramid as a, a vocal device. That It's got an echo chamber inside. Most people aren't aware of what it looks like inside, but Here's a cross section of the Great Pyramid, and you see that there are passageways, and this Great Pyramid is the only one that has a sarcophagus, a body-shaped cavity in the center, which is called the King's Chamber. And when you look closer at it, you see that there are these baffles, these stones that are actually suspended like vibrating um, s stones that can vibrate like for playing an instrument and the echo inside is incredible and it sends your energy back to you in a way where it does transform you and uh, Jerry Garcia said that he was in it and when he hummed he got a body massage and when he spoke the echo was deafening 
and someone stretched a membrane across the sarcophagus and put sand on it and said that it kept changing shape and it looked like Sanskrit writing as if this pyramid was making sounds and speaking to us as if it had its own vocal device something to ponder and we have no idea how it was made with two million blocks it would have taken hundreds of years to place all those gigantic blocks no one has any idea how you cut under a 10 ton block and lift it up and keep it up while you cut it perfectly and put it into place and all the proportions are based on pi pi here amid the pyramid is replete with the number pi so summing things up what am I trying to accomplish here I wanted to share some ideas that I never saw before unique ideas that the mouth of it mouth a bit that there's a consistent harmony amongst things that you wouldn't think there would be and uh, the shapes of the letters the shapes of the mouth the effect on the brain the effect of sound the effect of um, the pyramid on the planet and and just the curiosity of it that it just has the audacity to sit there and stare at us and go ha 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 how did we do this? If you think you know so much, then show us how this was done. Because I don't think anyone's got a good idea. And even if they think they do and just say, well, it was done by thought waves and sound waves and um, resonance, it's probably true. But still, how was it done? And <clears throat> how do we get value from these principles in our own life? And one of the ways that I've found of getting value is by listening closer to the language and making lists. I listen with a listening device inside my head where I slow down the language, the anguish that is hidden within the language and the secret messages that, um, for instance, if you take an S away from slaughter, you get laughter. And if you put a T in front of reason, you get treason. Is it treason to reason? Is it punishment when a pun is meant? Is a wee pun a weapon, a weapon of humor to change the color, the hue of a situation, to make more out of it, and to find not just fun, but actual intelligent secret messages that are hidden in the language. And thus, when you use your language, you're more uh, aware of what you're saying and what your intentions are and choose bigger and better words to um, or clearer words or more fun words fun fundamental fundamental it's uh, fun to make a mental note of the strange things that are people are saying and not paying any attention to so encouraging you to chant chanting will decrease the radiation effect on your body that your radiance that happens from chanting and doing other spiritual energy practices like yoga, qigong, any kind of chants, meditation, dance, music, singing, anything that creates a harmony with mind and body and spirit repels the radiation. When you're down, the negative energies, not just radiation, but poisons and GMOs and depleted food, everything is subject to our mind and our attitude and our vibrations. And so the words we choose to think as well as the words we choose to use have a tremendous effect upon our bodies and our world. And later I'll show you some of the rice experiments where people talk to rice and um, talk to water crystals and froze them and got different shapes of crystals and talk to plants. I called it my carrot, carrot experiment where I talked to carrots and they grew differently. I'll put the pictures in later. And so to be conscious, you can't just be unconscious. You've got to be conscious and conscientious to the best that you can to pay attention and elevate your humor, your ability to think uh, broadly and open up your mind to all the nuances that are possible to make enjoyment out of life. And so I wanted to also show you that, that I'm an interesting person and show myself that I'm an interesting person and 
put something together that is unique. The idea that the brain is like a giant planet, the planet is like a giant brain, um, is interesting. And the idea that you can look for these patterns and coincidences in your life patterns, and it bears out in things like astrology and random things that you think are random, like tarot cards and the I Ching, that you will find patterns within that that you wouldn't expect, but everything is interconnected. It all comes from one big bang. It's all part of one giant energy field. It's a continuum, and all matter is just whirling energy that takes shapes like a tornado. A tornado is always changing the air, but it's an energy field that sucks in air and spits out air, and essentially that's what everything is. It's a tornado. Atoms are tornadoes. It's just little vortexes whirling energy patterns that matter. They matter to us, so it's matter. But people have been able to transcend matter. Ghosts transcend matter. People have been able to ex make their ghost leave their body and appear to other people, even teleport their whole entire body. And then there's the whole story of the Shroud of Turin, of Jesus' burial cloth, that it bears his shadowy imprint imprinted by billions of tiny little laser singe, singe marks that just light, uh, darkened the cloth slightly in a perfect biological pattern that no artist could simulate because it's just laser burns of tiny little dots. So it's infinitesimal and it probably conveys tons of information. If we knew how to play it, it could play, who knows, everything in the universe might be contained there. I'm sure the whole story of everything that was happening around the story of Jesus, it really makes you stop and think that it's probably true when you study this shroud and find out that no human being could make one, that it's little tiny laser burns on this cloth, and the cloth is old. Even if it's only a thousand years old, there's no way to replicate it, and there's a cr there, there is... Um, puncture wounds on the head, which is not normal for a crucified person, and there's pollen that was found in 1978, tiny, tiny, microscopic, invisible to the eye, pollen from a thorn bush that only grows in Jerusalem, and it only is active for a few weeks during the time when he was crucified. So what does it mean? that Jesus is real. Well, for me, it meant a lot. It meant that the whole world wasn't crazy, or at least all these Christians weren't crazy. That all these people believing in Jesus must have been into something. They must feel something I can't feel. I was raised Jewish, and Jesus Christ was a curse word. You stubbed your toe and you said, Jesus Christ. It was an oath. And the Christians were our persecutors, and this is what I was raised as. And thought it was just insanity. I thought Judaism was insanity too. I even thought the idea of God was insanity. It didn't make any sense. I didn't understand. I, I, even now, if you ask a hundred people what God means to them and define it, you probably get a lot of different answers. And there's different aspects to God. People think of God as the first cause. How did everything get here? How did God get here? If God was always, then maybe everything was always. But there's stories of creation. And maybe these stories aren't fake. If the story of the sh Jesus and the burial, there's even a second cloth that was found that has blood stains that exactly match, it was the head cloth that matched the area of the head on the big shroud. So CSI and um, <clears throat> pathology and points to, you know, in a court of law, this has a hundred different reasons to say it's the real thing. And the carbon dating was taken from an area that was mended by nuns, they found out. So the carbon dating is invalid. And invalid, invalid. Revalidate. As far as I'm concerned, if you read about it, watch films about it, you can't dispute that the shroud is some kind of impossible thing that we don't understand, much like the pyramid. And there's other things too. There's this thing called the Guadalupe, this cloth with a picture, full color, that appeared on a fellow's shirt 500 years ago, and it's been kept in the same church on burlap, and 
It hasn't decayed. That burlap only lasts 20 years at best. And the colors are still bright. And the colors are iridescent like a butterfly's wings, like a CD. It's, it's some kind of energy that warped the cloth. And the cloth, they claim, stays at body temperature. And the eyes are open and only to a slit, but when you magnify in the eyes, you can see shine and reflection of what she was looking at when the imprint was made. So there's two cloths that bear human imprints, full length, made not by human hands, and they both relate to the story of Jesus and Mary. And my personal theory of Mary is that it comes, the story starts with some kind of Adam and Eve thing, but it makes more sense to me that the first human being to create would be a woman, not a man, because this business of a rib being made into a person doesn't sound as logical as making a woman who could then give birth to another person, a man, and then they could start and so what was the Great Pyramid for? Why is there a sarcophagus with no evidence of a burial in there? And it's resonating. And when you lay in it, you get a body massage. And when you speak, the echo is deafening. Maybe if you know the right words, you can appear amid another pyramid. Or change your shape. Or become. Maybe the pyramid was made by no hands. Maybe by God. Maybe it just crystallized. And maybe it was the vehicle for the first woman, for Eve, to be born into, to manifest a physical human being. And from her, because the pyramid looks like it only a one-time thing. You know, in a way, the, the, the passages out seem to be clogged. It seemed like something was set up to close it off. And uh, why would it resonate? And what is it resonating? Resonating the universal frequencies, resonating, channeling the life force into a physical form. So Eve begat Adam. And then later Eve came back again and begat Jesus. And she was known as Mary. And then she faded out and then Mary Magdalene faded in. Maybe Mary Magdalene was the morphing of Mary Mother, just as uh, ancient gods and goddesses gave birth and then mated with each other. Makes more sense than a lot of the stories. And on the eve of creation, was Adam a dam? Did he block the flow of Eve's natural energy? What was the forbidden fruit? Are we still suffering from this guilt over the forbidden fruit? Some say it's sex. Some say it's just oral sex. Some say it's masturbation. Some say it's drugs. Some say it's knowledge of good and evil. Some say it's just language itself that labeling things locks you in, that no longer are you a free spirit that can see all, that you're locked into a grid of language. You have to grit your teeth and speak these words and let go of the psychic connection, the anguish of language. Imagine that human beings could be psychic. And it's been proven that they are. Dean Radin has done experiments replicated by others showing that people can feel when they're being looked at subconsciously and it shows in their brain waves and that they can sense before startling pictures come up on a screen their brain waves start to react as if the subconscious mind knows what pictures are going to come up and some people can actually get desirable pictures and alter the random of the computer or are they just lucky gee odd it is odd when things like that happen, but that's the signs of God. These are not just mere synchronicities, these are natural phenomena. And we can tap into these things. And all of us have the birthright of being human, being a genius, 
being able to do what Jesus the genius and Mary Magdalene and others have been able to do what we used to call magic saintly powers 200 Catholic Saints look it up on the web are reputed to have levitated and there's great detailed stories signed by popes of Catholic Saints levitating and there's other films of levitation and the Indian yogis could throw a rope up in the air and climb up the rope in the middle of an open field and chi masters can put a spear to their throat and lean against it till the shaft bends and have no injury and all these things are available to see on the web and realize that chi chi power chi energy the inner chi the cheeriness chi is us jesus chi he is us chi is us we are all this energy force and he came to show us that too and to show us that if we have no fear then nothing can hurt you and you transcend everything and you send out such a powerful love signal that you attract love and then of course you say well why did he get crucified it was a bad time and it was a time when you couldn't communicate to that many people that clearly the language and the ability to transmit the language wasn't that well developed but Think of the imprint that people tried to wipe out the belief in Jesus so hard, burning people and feeding them to lions, and somehow it caught on. And we don't know all the story, but the Knights Templar all wore a picture copied off of the shroud of Jesus' face and felt it protected them, and it did for a long time, it seems. And maybe these, this shroud could actually be utilized now, 2,000 years later, it's been made into a hologram. It's actually been shown to be a 3D image somehow imprinted on what appears to be two-dimensional cloth. And it appears to be a record of uh, a device, a stargate. People have been healed by looking at it and being around it. So if it, it's, if it can be made into a hologram, it can be digitalized and everybody can have a copy. Everybody could have it hanging in their bathroom and take a shower with Jesus' energy on it. And it's been proven that if you send a laser beam through a salamander onto a frog embryo, the frog embryo will morph into a salamander. That light going through DNA and Jesus' DNA is all through that shroud. Light going through DNA of one critter can alter and advance the DNA of what it goes upon. So what if Jesus died partly for our sins, but also to help us cleanse our physical, spiritual bodies with this miracle that once we perceive it mentally, we're shocked to see, oh my God, how did this happen? He turned to light, left a burst of energy. And then that this cloth is a digital device document that can be reproduced and have effects on people. The data is in, um, I'll show it to you, that these experiments have been done. So imagine in every church, Cherish, we're gonna change the name of the churches to Cherishes. This is what you should be doing. You should open a door and a door and add more, and or and possibilities. We are going to cherish at churches and let go of all criticism and threats and thinking that God is vengeful so imagine now that you could buy or get your church to buy a full-length front and back 